impression is it's mind blowing. I mean, like you said, you had a little bit of time to use it, but it, it's it's literally unbelievable. We're here in the shop at unofficial use only. And today, what we're going to do is install an iDrive. Thing's 100% bone stock. Now we've already taken the vehicle out in the backyard behind the shop and put it through its paces. We've also taken it out and done a little uh, dirt road drifting and some other fun stuff for the new Jeep Kana series. So this vehicle we're gonna build from completely mild to completely wild. And we're gonna do it one step at a time. And what this will do is it's going to extremely heighten the throttle sensitivity of the vehicle um, to allow us to really pitch it into a drift and do some other things uh, a little more efficiently, as well as the taser, which is going to allow us to do a whole bunch of other fun things, turning traction control 100% off, uh, doing a line lock, lots of other features that the taser has, which will allow us to take this bone stock vehicle and make it a little bit more of a beast. In fact, iDrive has what we call a beast mode. Um, so we'll see what it's really capable of. 100% uh, honest, 100% unbiased um, installation of these parts and the use that comes with them. Um, I've heard great things about iDrive and I've heard phenomenal things about the Taser as well. So it's perfect to use these as some of the first two modifications of this vehicle before we start doing tires and lift kits and everything else. Um, and next will be this brand new set of BFGs. We've got 37, 12, 5, R17, as well as a set of 35s. So first we're gonna do the 35s, and we're gonna put the 35s on the JT with zero lift. And we'll do flex tests, everything, to make sure that there's 100% clearance, um, exactly how you do it at home. So follow along. Now these products apparently have a super simple installation. So here are the actual components. Here is the iDrive. So this is the screen that you see that will allow you to control all of the modes. And this is the wiring associated with it. So there's a couple different pieces. The iDrive is going to plug directly into the gas pedal. When we unlock it, so there's the lock that I just undid, right there. And then once it's unlocked, you unplug it. So now it's unplugged. So I just plugged in and locked the iDrive, one side of it and the other side of it is going to plug into the original plug. So now one side is plugged in to the iDrive and one side is plugged into the car. And then this gets routed up to where you want your iDrive. Try and find a good spot for the actual iDrive itself. And then it gets plugged in to itself. Like this. And then last but not least is where we want the screen. So the screen can go in multiple spots. You can put it over here, because it's really accessible, you can see it, it's within your control range, and I can route all the wiring out of the way. So I'll route the wiring real quick. So the glass cleaner that I'm spraying on is just to use an alcohol-based product and clean the surface so that the sticker on the back of the iDrive works really well. So now the iDrive is installed 100%. It's in the vehicle. And now this JT has both an iDrive and a taser installed. So we can take it out, we can run it through its paces and see what it does and uh, have some fun. So very easy installation. Um, less than 10 minutes for both products. Um, pretty simple how to actually use the iDrive. Um, it's actually pretty simple. 
like crazy simple. There's really just three um, main different settings or sets of settings. And then there's dash dash, which I'll show you. So one thing that we totally missed was you need to make sure you have it as automatic or manual transmission. Now we borrowed this video from our friends Mojito Jeep Neon Gladiator JT. They gave us permission to use this. So what you need to do is press and hold down the button on the left for three seconds. It's going to show zero, zero. If you have a manual transmission, that's fine. Go ahead and hit the left button again and you're good to go. If you have an automatic transmission like 95% of us, you're going to press the button on the right until it says 8, 8. Once you do that, you hit the button on the left and it's going to go right into dash dash. And now you're ready to use it. Then if you flip to E, there's E9, E0, 1, 2, and it goes all the way up to 9. 9 being the most conservative and 0 being the least conservative, um, the most aggressive. But it's still E for like economy. Um, you switch to U, which is ultra mode, and you have, you have 0 through 9. So I pretty much just use... E9, which is super conservative, slow motion, slow, 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 or I use uh, Ultra 9, U9. The cool thing is, when you're driving along and you're in E9, which I try to do sometimes, um, you're driving along, you're in E9, you're trying to be, you know, a nice, safe, conservative driver, whatever. And for some reason, you need to pass somebody because you're ticked off or whatever the case is, you just hit one button and it flips right to Unite. Now, I didn't change my foot on the pedal, and you can see the difference in the power. Um, because what it does is it completely opens up the fuel to the engine. Now, I don't know all the scientific stuff behind it. I didn't do a ton of research. All I know is I love using this thing. So again, yeah, and then you have AC, which is automatic control, which it's basically um, on its own figuring out what it needs to do. So it's it's really pretty simple. Um, there's not a lot of nothing to that. Um, so so we'll go through it again. So you got AC dash dash, which is like it's inactive. E9, which is super conservative. Like I'm putting the gas down pretty good right now, and the truck's barely moving. Now if I hit one button, which is mode, like that, it instantly switches. It's crazy. Um, it's like you're putting your foot to the floor even though you're not changing the pedal at all. So we're in Ultra 9, we're going to put it in E9. Actually there's someone behind me, so I better wait till we get to Mexico, or not that far. And this is E9, I'm putting my foot down pretty good. And it's crazy. It's like it's like being in a really high gear. Um, it just it doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to give it any gas. It's it's really, really bizarre. But all it shows the opposite. I mean, you just tap the button and it takes off. It's incredible. Okay, so we're gonna do a comparison. We're gonna do E9 and then we're gonna do Ultra 9. We're gonna go. Whoop. E9 still scroll the tires. Got a little chirp out of the tires in E9, which is, I didn't expect. Gonna switch to Ultra 9. And go. So it's exactly the same to a T, which is really hard to believe. Um, that's really, really odd. Now, this is bone stock. Absolutely incredible. 
a couple of things we wanted to hit uh, that are pretty important. When we started this a few weeks ago, one of the first two or the first two modifications we made were the iDrive mm -hmm. and the Taser. Mm -hmm. So um, I had a little bit of opportunity while pitching the vehicle around and playing with it to test out both the iDrive and the Taser. But Nick is fortunate enough to drive this Gladiator every single day. So with driving it every single day, um, you know, we'll hit the iDrive first. What are your initial impressions of everything that the iDrive does for you? I noticed the throttle response definitely got a little bit better. Um, well, a lot bit better. <laughs> but, you know, I only used it from bone stock to as progressive as it could possibly get. Yeah. But you've had the ability to test it through everything in the past few weeks. Yeah. So what are your honest opinions of what it is and what it does and how easy it is to use? Uh, well, first of all, my first impression is it's mind-blowing. I mean, like you said, you had a little bit of time to use it, but it's, it's, it's literally unbelievable. Um, I pretty much keep it in, ultra, I'm either in Ultra 9, which is the most extreme, the most sensitive, or E9, which is the least sensitive, the most conservative. I don't really mess with anything in between. Um, so my initial impression is it's freaking amazing, like literally. It's, there's no lag at all. I mean, like when you normally when you want to go past somebody, like you're going 55 or 60 around the expressway, you know, you have to like give yourself that gap and punch it, wait for it to kick in and go See, around. I don't have that problem with some of my vehicles because they still run on a cable <laughs> instead of all this electronic gizmos. This is the Frankenbrut. It's a 2006 Jeep Wrangler. It's uh, mildly modified. So I stretched the frame 27 and a half inches. It's, um, been converted into a truck, as you can see. Um, so, you know, from what I understand, the iDrive, it, it eliminates some of the double redundancy in the system. Um, but definitely, when you touch the gas pedal, it's, and I don't know how to quantify it, but it's way faster than in its factory form. Um, but with all the different settings, I know you said you've only used, you know, you primarily use a couple. But with all the different settings, do you notice, um, you know, I know people want to know, is there a gas mileage difference? Is there um, normal drivability difference? You know, do you, do you just keep it in ultra because that's the best way to drive? Or do you tend to play with it and try different things? And is there any difference other than the response is so much faster? Yeah, okay, there's a big difference. Um, the Ultra 9 is a little bit too peppy for most situations. Like just like when we're backing into this, Ultra 9, it's almost kind of dangerous because you literally just touch the gas and it'll take off on you. Yeah, but if you get used to that, then that's how it would drive. I mean, like, I have a giant throttle body and drive by cable on my Jeep. Okay. Um, and when I touch the gas, it moves. Right yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, there's no like, way. To, you're basically putting it into that. So as a driver, yeah. you would learn that even if you kept it on Ultra 9 all the time. Yep. But definitely throttle response is greatly improved. So exactly what the product claims, which mm -hmm. is really cool for iDrive. Yep. Um, so because this is the first vehicle that I've been able to test with the iDrive, um, I can definitely say that here at Unofficial Use Only, we will be offering that on every JK or JL build that we do from now on because it does really improve it. I think, uh, you know, with supercharger swaps, Hemi swaps, stuff like that, it would do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, which would be nice because I've driven a lot of Hemis and I've installed a lot of Hemis and that's one thing I always complained about. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the only way, ways to kind of beat some of the drag racing is you'd have to hold the brake and preload it waiting for the light to switch so that you could launch fast enough. Um, but with the iDrive you don't really have to have that problem so definitely a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. So all in all the iDrive definitely a really good product. Uh, highly recommend it. Um, and there's great people behind it. You know, Chris and some of the other guys mm -hmm. there, they're phenomenal yeah. people. Um, so definitely, if you get a chance, don't hesitate. Call us here at Unofficial Use Only. We'll hook you up. Get a hold of iDrive directly, order it, you know, however, whatever is most convenient for you. But we are dealers, so we, we'd be more than happy to help you out. Mm -hmm.